you know, I always say it's appreciating the little things in life that matter. And in this particular case, these stealth models on Open Router just add a bunch of mystery. I actually really appreciate that they do this. I love like deep diving into who made it, which we're pretty sure it's OpenAI. But also, what model is this? Because it is one of the most interesting models that I've tested in a long time. When I first tested Horizon Alpha, I actually found it to be kind of mediocre. But what I've learned after actually dedicating some time to this model is that how you prompt it matters a lot. And it's got this like inbuilt ability to kind of act like a pair programmer with you. Almost annoyingly so, but you can tell it not to do that anymore and it kind of listens. So anyway, let's jump into this a little bit. I do have some evals. I want to kind of go through step by step sort of what I've learned about Horizon Beta. And in particular, maybe make a guess at what model this actually is. So Horizon Beta, as I said before, is peculiar. One of the things that I would want to say is that it's incredibly fast. And I, I've actually put together a couple tests, very simple tests, that I wanted it to create a portfolio. So basically, imagine I was a developer and I, needed, I was looking for a job and I wanted to create a website. And I put the same test in Claude and Horizon Beta. Now, I do know these are very different models. There's different circumstances, but the speed of it getting from zero to one is just astronomical. In fact, on average, it was 4.3 times faster than Anthropic. I do think Anthropic does a little bit better job kind of testing things, but depending on the value, the, the price of Horizon Beta, it may actually end up being beneficial to us to use Horizon Beta or whatever it ends up being because of the speed of it. If we learn how to kind of harness its ability and get like so much faster token output. I want to show you though, that I think this is one of the best front end like designers, maybe would be the best way to put it, that I've tested. And let me show you a couple examples here. This is a test that I did talking about building myself a portfolio uh, page, very simple prompt. In fact, let me go ahead and pull up that prompt and show you what it looks like. This is the prompt in a folder called Claude Personal Portfolio. I use the same prompt basically for both, but you can kind of get the idea. Create the most killer personal profile page for a programmer named Gosu Coder that has a YouTube channel and has been coding for 20 years. The idea is this needs to literally be the best possible. Don't ask questions to make it to completion. This is actually important because I just wanted it to do what it needed to do there. But look what it generated. Now I'll show you the Claude one here in a minute and you can make a decision on which one you think is better. But like, look at the nice little like animated background uh, very interesting. Like it's got like this YouTube thing. If only I had 250,000 subscribers, that'd be insane. Uh, it kind of made up all that information. The skills, the projects, I thought that was kind of funny. So I could go get Rick rolled some of the timeline stuff. So really great like design overall. I'm actually not sure what this button's supposed to be. I thought maybe this would actually switch between dark mode and light mode. And I think it might supposed to, but I don't have that turned on. Um, all of this like animates very nicely. Now let me show you what Claude ended up putting together here because I do think there's a substantial difference in quality. This is nice, but honestly, I mean, this is actually pretty sick, to be honest. This, uh, these little animations in the background, I gotta give it to Claude on that. Featured projects, it doesn't actually load any in there. Um, the YouTube channel, I thought that was kind of cool. So really good, really solid, but there's just something about the style of this that I like. Maybe it's just my personal preference. And I will give it to Claude that I actually really love this little animation in the background. I think that's pretty sweet. Kind of a little noisy, but uh, less noisy, or I mean more noisy than what we've got here on Horizon Beta. Let me show you a couple other things that I ended up building with this. Now this is a simple prompt to build like a web OS version. Very sweet, very slick looking. It does have a start menu. Uh, this actually works, but none of this stuff actually opens. You can't actually open any windows. So from a UI perspective, it is just absolutely crushing it. Let me just do a test real quick here to show you how fast this model is. All right, so I just kicked off a prompt to create a game of Flappy Bird in RootCode. We're gonna talk about this a little bit because I have basically, I didn't actually tell it anything in particular about not asking questions this time. And what I've learned about this model is most times when you're just starting out, you if you're doing a zero to one, it does a great job of just like doing the thing you tell it, even if it's a generic prompt. But I do also wanna show you when I'm using it in my existing code base, because I actually built a lot of features with it. I did tried to do some refactoring with it with mixed results, but honestly, refactoring is one of the hardest things for models to actually accomplish. 
Watch how fast this thing's going. It's going to be done here in just a second. We're going to see if this actually works. But in general, zero to one, it just goes. It creates what it needs to do, and it does it incredibly fast. Now, is this a result of the capacity that Horizon Beta has? Maybe a lot of people aren't hitting it right now. But ultimately, it is, like I said, about four times faster with the same prompt and relatively similar scores. When I show you the evals, in particular in Rue Code, all right, now we're getting pretty close. It looks like it's going to add pipes and uh, collision detection scoring and game state. Actually, it looks like it finished. This is one thing I've noticed. A lot of models struggle with the to-do list in root code. You know, it marked the implement core game loop physics, blah, 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 as done, but it didn't finish those. But anyway, let's jump into to see if it actually made an, a working one. That's anything reasonably good. Oh my gosh, like check this out. This might be one of the better, like, physics ones out the gate. Art style is great. It's even got sound. I probably don't have that turned on, but it's got little weep sounds. Like, look at this. That is incredible. And you see how fast that generated that, that game? Now, let me jump into my existing code base here, and let's take a look at this one. What I wanted to do, I am in code mode. Let me see if I can actually zoom in the text a little bit. Let's make it a little bit easier to read. Let me go back out just a touch here. It's probably about the biggest I can get it. But I basically wanted to refactor chat.ts.view. I asked it some high priority items uh, and it gave me what I would say a relatively good advice for that. And it did an odd job with the task completion. This is just formatted kind of oddly, but I don't pay attention to that stuff because that doesn't matter. Now I say do number one for me. Now watch what it does. And I've actually tested this without asking it for recommendations, by the way. It like goes into this I don't actually even know how to describe it. Pair programmers is the best way where literally it wants to give me ideas along the entire route. And I think you can prompt around this. I've been able to successfully say, hey, don't ask me any more questions. Just do what you think is best. And it will kind of listen to that. So it's a very fascinating model to me because I built my pair programmer mode, which you can see right here because I got frustrated with the coding like prompts, the coding modes actually jumping into coding right away. This almost takes a different approach where it, it's asking me everything. And all the way down before I implement confirmed props and events for chat message list, I want to plan to pass chat segments is mobile, is artifact drawer open, etc. And it's fascinating to me that it would even ask me that because I've never had a model ask me a question like that before. So on one hand, it actually made me stop and think. I actually went to go look at the code and I was like, yeah, we should pass those. I actually appreciate that a lot. But on the other hand, I do get some weird questions. Here's a weird question. I have the necessary context. I will now create the new components under this folder. Great. And use chat message list preserving behavior and classes with minor D to proceed. Or it gives me like a pause implementation. That's just a weird question for me. Uh, so it's almost like, an extra approval step because you know in root code i have auto approval on for some things but here it basically wants me to decide if i actually want to do what we've agreed to do so those things are just odd to me and i'm not exactly sure what to think of it other than you need to talk to this model very very differently and one of the things that i actually found kind of interesting which i had never noticed before in root code is you would get questions like this where it's got like code and then there'd be no little code block here. And I'm just gonna scroll down through here a little bit and show you the number of questions it gave me. Like it's honestly nonstop, but I wanted to see like how many it would do before it got going. Eventually we got to a point where it asked me a question and then it started writing code, but it didn't actually do the refactor. So it created the new components, but in all of the stuff that had happened, it forgot to actually update the original file for refactoring. And I told it that, and it's like, oh no, it's all good. We, we did whatever you said. And I'm like, no, you literally did not refactor the file. You never implemented them. It does. It's not like, you're absolutely right. It's not your, you know, I missed that. I'm sorry. It's like, okay, cool. We're just going to go ahead and proceed to do that. So it's got a different like personality compared to, to Claude, which I kind of appreciate. I kind of just want it to do the thing, but it's at the same time, there is something to be said about like it making kind of a blatant mistake and then telling me that, you know, no, it, it did it right. And I have to kind of like tell it again and again. And here it definitely broke it in the refactor. And I told it that, well, you definitely broke it. 
with the changes you already made. When I send a message to the chat, my messages don't show in the chat window at all. There was nothing in the console. So I gave, I made it actually kind of go through and think about like what it could have done there. And ultimately I went through some back and forth with it. We never actually landed in a functional thing. So most likely I'm just going to revert that those changes and, and let it be. And not a big deal. It's one of the things that I like to test. It's just kind of like a big refactor with models. It honestly came up with a pretty good component breakdown. And it did follow my format fairly well for how I actually define components, how I actually import. One of the things that a lot of AI models will do is it'll import view incorrectly. So it did a great job at that type of stuff. So overall, I would say I'm impressed with this model. You just have to know that you are talking to it very, very differently. And the really good thing about all this is when we go to my evals, those are written in such a way to make the AI complete them in one go. They don't ask questions typically. There are some that still do like O3 is pretty bad about asking questions. So I just, this is the evals that I did from August, just a couple days ago. And I've included now Horizon Beta. Now, none of these have actually been tuned to this model at all. I actually ran these with whatever the default temperature is. I do not know if temperature matters, but you can see here, we're looking like right in range with Quinn 3 Coder and Claude 4 Sonnet. Very, very like good scores, very usable. And in fact, the speed was so astronomically fast. Again, when I would run one eval on Claude and I'd run another one on Horizon Beta, the Horizon Beta one would typically finish 4.3 times faster. So that speed has to account for something. So we're talking a faster time to score than any of these other models by a pretty big margin from what I've seen. And then on Crush, it scored a little bit lower, unfortunately, but I did find it very, very good. Like it did a great job. It's still in the 20,000s. And again, very, very fast. One of the things that I will say that Horizon Beta doesn't do is it's not tool call happy. So this is going to be a lot of times personal preference because you may be the type of person that wants it to go immediately to the end and have everything functioning. What a lot of times Horizon Beta will do is it will take it so far, stop, and it won't necessarily automatically run the test for you, at least with the current harnesses that I've tested in, which means that it doesn't have the context of if it failed or not. Now in, in Crush, it actually did do a decent job of trying to run some of the test and verifying it. But even after running it and failing it, it just thought it was done. So I'm not totally sure what's going on there. But one of the things that Claude 4 does really well is it will loop on itself to fix any problems, which ultimately is why a lot of these scores end up so much better. And Quinn 3 Coder is really, much, really pretty much the same way. So what do I think this model is? One of the things that is just very confusing to me overall is how fast this model is. So originally my bet was very much on GPT 4.2 or some sort of iteration on 4.1. One of the reasons for that was the context window was first shown at 1 million and that aligned with GPT 4.1. Now in Open Router, we are only getting a portion of that, about a quarter of that currently. So whether it's gonna actually release with the million or if there's gonna be two different pricing plans, we don't know, but there was actually shown initially as a million. I have never seen a model though with this kind of like personality. And maybe that's the wrong word for it. It is very different than GPT 4.1. Originally when I was testing alpha, I was thinking that it was likely that it was a GPT 4.2. And then you layer in the speed and I start to become a little bit more skeptical that this is a GPT 4.1 size model. I start thinking like, is this a smaller model? Like something like maybe a 5.0 or a 5.0 mini? that 5.0 Mini kind of makes a lot of sense to me, that actually it's just tuned a little bit more for coding and it does an incredible job of tool calling. I have got, I think, basically zero tool failures in root code when I used it. In Crush, I got basically zero tool call failures. So we've got a model that excels at tool call calling, has a strange personality, incredibly fast, and supposedly a 1 million context limit. I find it very hard to believe in my mind that this is actually an open source model. And if I am wrong about this, I will be ecstatic. Do I hope it's an open source model? 100%. It's very unlikely that it's something else. I think most likely it is a 5.0 mini. There are a lot of people speculating on it being 04 because if you ask the model about reasoning, it'll tell you it's a reasoning model or a hybrid reasoning model. 
But I'm willing to kind of say, I do not think this is 04. I think it's too fast. It doesn't give you any of its thought process on it. It's really good at tool calling, which reasoning models typically have not been before. And I don't think 04, even if the model is telling us the truth, is a hybrid reasoning model. My best guess right now is that this is a GPT-50 mini model, but it's been tuned very highly for tool calling. And if that is the case, and the price of this is low, and they have prompt caching, this could be absolutely game-changing for coding, to be honest with you. Now, time will tell like if people actually like the personality of this thing, because ultimately, it's just going to be personal preference. If you're a vibe coder, which I am not, uh, you're going to hate it. You're going to hate it asking you those questions along the way, and you're going to have to learn to prompt around that. And people might just like the way Claude works better. But if you're actually working through something tricky or hard, you may actually appreciate the fact that you are getting asked all those questions. Even though some of the questions I would say are kind of dumb, but again, I think you could prompt around that. And the other thing I would say is the speed of it is just so incredibly fast. There might be something to be said to being able to run this just to get it to like 70, 80%, and then using something like Claude to bring it over the line to do the testing, iterating on it. And then finally, the piece that I would say is, I've never seen a model be so good at front end. So there's something magical about this. Like for example, I know this is just Flappy Bird, but check out the design of this, this little bird here. Check out the clouds in the background. The pipes are great. The physics are like phenomenal. There's sound to it. And it's not only that, my personal profile page, which I'm not gonna use by the way, makes me want to go and actually see what it could come up with to redesign this, because I actually do not like the way this looks for my e where I store my evals, which by the way, I'm working on getting August updated in here now. So I may actually experiment with doing the update with Horizon Beta. So my guess is GPT-50 Mini, and I'm curious what you guys think. And if you had a chance to use this model a lot, what do you think about like all the questions that it asked? Is that something you like, or dislike? Uh, do you get dumb questions as well as good questions? Yeah, let me know in the comments below. I'm really curious what everybody else's experiences are. And if you have a prediction on what you think this is, I've heard people really thinking this is the open source model. I used to think it was going to be a GPT 4.1 or 4.2. I'm actually thinking it's probably like a mini model of something simply because of the speed of this thing. We've just got such fast speed that it has to be something small or they figured out something with inference that I just don't quite understand. And if it's a hybrid reasoning model, it doesn't come off as a hybrid reasoning model, even though the, the model itself will tell you that it is. All right, that's going to wrap it up. Appreciate you all. Have a great rest of your day. Take care.